Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm inviting you to join me in preparing my first batch of the potting mix for African Violets using the Promix brand. This is a brand new growing medium for me and I'm excited to share this experience with all of you. Let's get started. In the previous video I have reviewed the potting mixes available in the big box stores and garden centers which I used to grow my African violets last year. Now that my collection has grown, I have decided to start using the professional growing medium. I learned about this particular brand Promix from the African Violet Nerds group on Facebook. It is a very helpful group of African Violet enthusiasts and if you haven't joined it yet, I highly recommend it. I learned a lot from this group. Promix is a general purpose growing medium that is produced by Premier Horticulture. As a newbie with African Violets, I used to have pH level issues with the African Violet crowns. I used to have tight crown centers and I learned from the Facebook group that they can be caused by the higher level of pH. African Violets grow at slightly acidic levels between 6 and 6.5 and this particular mix is tailored for plants that grow between the levels of 5 and 7. The pH level of 7 is considered neutral. So I'm hoping that this particular mix will help me get the pH levels right when growing my plants. Another important factor why I chose this particular mix is is that it already contains the mycorrhiza in it. In the original recipe that you saw in the previous video, I used uh, a separately purchased mycorrhiza um, brand. But now, now I no longer have to do that. It's already in there. And finally, uh, this mix provides the protection of a biofungicide which prevents root diseases with African violets. The ingredients of Promix include Canadian sphagnum peat moss. It's 75 to 85%, which is the main component. And then the remaining 15% uh, are vermiculite, perlite, dolomitic and calcitic limestone or pH adjuster, wetting agent, and biofungicide, Bacillus pumilus. So mostly it's a sphagnum peat moss. So in my recipe, I will be, again, combining it 50-50 with perlite, just like I did with my other mixes. In this batch, I will keep all of the other ingredients the same as in the original recipe from my previous video, with the exception of the garden lime and the mycorrhizae, because Promix already has them in. I will be using an open container today, so we can easily see what's happening inside. The mix in the open container needs to be covered with plastic for storage. So in the future I'll just be using uh, the container that has a lid to store my potting mix. This container is 15 quarts, so it should be easy to make our mix in. The mix, once prepared, it should be about uh, 5 quarts total. It is recommended to wear a mask and the gloves to protect yourself while preparing the potting mix. This is what Promix looks like inside. It has some perlite in it. So we'll add two quarts of Promix. I'm using this measuring cup, a one quart, 32 ounce measuring cup. And for those who use uh, liters, here is one liter. And the second quart of Promix goes in. And now we add the same amount of perlite, the coarse variety that I showed you in the previous video. A 
it looks like a lot of perlite at first but because I have weak water I need extra perlite in my potting mix we are now mixing the perlite with promix and as we're mixing we can see that it was not too much perlite at all it's just the right amount and I'm not using gloves today but I am using a big spoon so I am trying to avoid the contact of the mix with the bare skin and now we can add up to three cups of warm water just to moisten it evenly and then mix it up again thoroughly we don't have to add all water at once so we can just keep mixing and uh, seeing um, that the moisture evenly distributes through the mix this mix is very dry from what I can see so I think that it easily is going to take in three cups of water and the water is warm temperature it's not too hot in the previous recipe I used hot water because we didn't, didn't have the fungicide um, bacteria um, mixed in but here I'm trying to be careful not to kill the beneficial bacteria or beneficial fungi I should say so that's that's about right to that we will add a cup of horticultural charcoal and I spoke briefly about it in the previous video a teaspoon of dry molasses to feed the mycorrhizae fungi because they need uh, some sugar to grow then we add two full tablespoons of bonite systemic houseplant insect control and the number on that is 951 they come under different numbers so I add two full with heap tablespoons uh, the label calls for two and a half tablespoons for one gallon but I've used it in the past and I never had any insect issues with just two tablespoons and then uh, four tablespoons with heap of diatomaceous earth and it's about this amount here normally we know about diatomaceous earth to be helpful in preventing crawling insects um, when applied as powder on top of the plants but when blended into potting soil it helps prevention and larvae control for those in insects so I use it in the soil as well for bonite systemic granules uh, the information is that it helps prevent insects that are uh, known to be harming African violets such as uh, trips and mealybugs and uh, there is also another variety of this insecticide in a higher concentration called marathon uh, that has one percent of in imidacloprid um, and this one has 0.22 percent of imidacloprid and it's an active ingredient so I do not use Marathon because it's higher concentration and I try to do as less harm to myself as possible even though I try not to touch that but um, anyways um, I, I use uh, Bonite Systemic and not Marathon but I know both of them are highly effective uh, with preventing insects so now we just mix it thoroughly Once thoroughly mixed, it should be this consistency. It should be still very fluffy, um, not too moist, but moist enough so it can be used for repotting. And we will not be waiting for two weeks like 
we did in the, my original recipe because uh, it's already adjusted. It has already the pH adjuster in the promix component. So this can be used in just a few days up to a week of storage time. So we will cover it now with plastic and we will wait for a few days and then in the next video I will show you how I weak water my plants and together we will plant one of the African violets that I have on a wick. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to stay tuned for my future videos and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you again on the next episode of my African Violet Adventures.